What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with another smartphone smackdown. This time we've got the iPhone 4 and the Challenger, the new kid on the block, the Samsung built Nexus S. We're going to put these two head to head into five round tests and see who's king of the ring. So there are obviously a ton of topics that we can cover. I'm going to try and cover the most important and most salient and try and get through all of this in an under six minute comparison. So we're going to talk about speed, text entry, screen, browser, and some extras and see if we can declare a winner at the end. Both of these phones manage memory very differently, but let me show you that all the applications have been cleared. iPhone, nothing open there. With Gingerbread on the Nexus S, you can actually manage your running applications right from the menu. So go ahead and jump right into Manage Apps and show what's running. And all I've got there is a keyboard and settings. Live wallpapers have been turned off. All right, so for speed, both of these are running on the same Wi-Fi network. Let's try and load the same web page. All right, so both of these pages have obviously been loaded before, so it's a test of websites that you visit on a regular basis. We'll go ahead and do a refresh on each. Go ahead and do the same thing here as well. I had met the same time again on the same Wi-Fi networks. So we've got go right there, we've got go right there, and they are both off. I should mention from a processor standpoint, both are running uh, it's very similar processors, one gigahertz Hummingbird here in the Nexus S, and the system on a chip, the A4 in the iPhone. Well, it looks like that was almost identical. Uh, let's try running that test one more time and see if there's any sort of speed difference here. Because that was pretty much too close to call. We've got them both uh, loading. I think the Nexus S is showing a bit more content first. Nexus S is done. iPhone is still loading. So we will give this round finally had sort of a definitive answer uh, to the Nexus S. And I will say it's representative of sort of some other sites I visited. Nexus S has been a little bit faster. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some applications and show the speed here. We'll load some like applications. I've got Angry Birds here on both. We'll go ahead and launch both of these. And once again, it looks like the Nexus S loaded things just a little bit faster. We'll go ahead and go back home and all these things are still gonna stay uh, running. Let's go ahead and take a look at calendar. Uh, one of the things that can often be a bit slow to load, we'll go ahead and do that both here as well. Calendar loaded a little bit faster on the Nexus S. Let's go ahead and try camera. Loaded just a second later on the iPhone. Uh, still took longer to load on the iPhone. So we still had a quicker load despite my inaccurate fingers on the Nexus S. So from a speed standpoint, the Nexus S really is a screamer. Uh, it optimizes the Hummingbird processor chipset that we've seen in all of the Galaxy S devices. And the phone is just very fast. Not to say the iPhone 4 is a speed slouch, but the hardware and the software really done a nice job of being optimized together. Uh, on the Nexus S. So this round's going Nexus S. All right, now let's talk about text entry. Both of these are slab phones and don't have physical keyboards, so you gotta input text using the screens. Uh, the Nexus S features a new keyboard. It's unique to Gingerbread. See, it's a little better laid out. Uh, it's got some spaces between the keys. You can input text normally as you would uh, just typing. And you also have the voice to text feature down there, which works very well. And you can do it in landscape or portrait. Uh, the iPhone has a very similar keyboard layout. You could type in portrait or landscape. And uh, there's no sort of alternative entry for text um, entry. So either it's vertical or horizontal, but either way, you're stuck with the keyboard. There is no voice option here. Now with Android, you can go ahead and add swipe or a ton of other third-party keyboards. So from a text entry and sort of raw keyboard standpoint, this really is a very close draw if you're just comparing this to this. However, when you look at that little icon right there, and it's very accurate text uh, entry, not to mention third-party support, the Nexus S is going to once again take the text entry round. All right, so let's talk about screen. A lot has been made about this contour display here on the Nexus S. See, it's a little bit round. In practical use, you don't really notice it. Uh, it's kind of cool to see. It's supposed to sit better on your face. The Nexus S does feature a four inch Super AMOLED display, which essentially means that the touch mechanism you used to touch the screen is integrated into the glass as opposed to sitting on top like traditional touchscreens. 
Uh, it's going to have a resolution of 800 by 480 and with all sort of super AMOLED screens, if you've ever seen a Galaxy S series phone, you notice that there's a little bit of a twinge of color to it. Almost looks a little gray or blue. Uh, that's definitely the case here with the Nexus S as, uh, as well. I will say the screens on both do look beautiful. They show great images. Uh, the iPhone's got a 3.5 inch screen with the display of 960 by 640 and a lot's been made about the retina display now this is really a super amoled um, darker colors uh, richer colors versus a higher resolution so that's going to come down to really what looks better for your eyes however for my eyes i prefer the higher resolution while watching video on the iPhone. Unfortunately, showing that on YouTube, recording it, it's not going to be able to see the video fidelity. Uh, but I will say that I personally prefer the screen on the iPhone versus the Super AMOLED screen on the Nexus S. So, screen is going to go to the Nexus S. I'm sorry, it's going to go to the iPhone, rather. Going to the iPhone. Screen's going to the iPhone. All right, let's talk very quickly about browsers. Both of these feature multi-touch browsers based on WebKit standards that can do all kinds of goodness. Uh, pinch and zoom works pretty well. You've got integrated, just play it a YouTube video there. You've got YouTube that can sort of integrate to each of these. Pinch to zoom is not as smooth on Android as it is on the iPhone 4. However, Android can play Flash content, Flash 10.1. Uh, which is not necessarily the most important thing to me personally, but I know a lot of you rely very heavily on being able to view Flash content. It is a battery drain. You can turn it on or off if you want to in order to make that battery sacrifice. But with most browser videos and browser comparisons that I've done, the addition of Flash and the opening up of content that that gives you gives this round right back to the Nexus S. All right, so let's talk about some extras and little things that the operating systems are going to come with. One of the things that Android is really getting known for very quickly is its navigation, its Google Maps navigation, which is a free turn-by-turn -turn navigation option. On the iPhone, you've got a ton of navigation choices, but you have to pay for them. Either in a one lump sum, it'll store the maps on your phone, or a subscription fee like AT&T's Telenav service, which relies on the network. Uh, having to pay for features like that, not necessarily the biggest fan of, especially when there are free options available uh, on a myriad of Android devices. I do like the ease and simplicity of the iPhone. The iPhone is actually my daily driver. I've gotten used to it. Uh, I really don't like the built-in mail client that comes uh, on the iPhone, and Android gives you a bit more options with their native Gmail client. So when you come to sort of intangibles, uh, there's something to be said about having an iPhone, the way it looks and the way it feels. Uh, it's a very seamless process. It's, it's a very uh, walled garden integration, so you're sort of stuck within Apple's limitations. Uh, Android is very open. You can customize it any way you want to make it sort of feel and look the way you most prefer. Uh, this one is really a personal preference, uh, and my personal preference is I prefer uh, the iPhone operating system over Android, but objectively, Android definitely brings more to the table than iOS does. So from an extra and everything you can do with Android and all the customizations you can make if you choose to, sort of the stock Android, the way it looks, if say your grandmother were to buy the phone, uh, is still a very elegant interface. So the extras has to go to Android. So this one was very, very, very much a blowout with the Nexus S taking speed, taking text entry, the iPhone taking screen, uh, and the Nexus S grabbing back browser and extras. This was an absolute smackdown of the Nexus S versus the iPhone. We've got our new king, ladies and gentlemen, the Nexus S. The video went a little longer than I wanted. I was trying to make it as concise as possible. Uh, if you have any other questions or things that you want to see brought head to head in future rounds of iPhone versus Nexus S, go ahead and let me know and leave your comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. So one last point that I want to bring up while doing these phone comparisons head to head, it's really important to try and leave your personal uh, opinions aside and look very objectively at the operating systems. So despite the fact that I am an iPhone user and that's what I use as a daily device, uh, I can appreciate Android and what it brings to the table. There's a lot of customizations, a lot of elegance, and a lot of power in this operating system. Uh, so whether you have preconceived notions about which phone you're going to like, if you're in the market for a new phone, you owe it yourself to look at both operating systems because you might find Apple might sway one way, Android might sway another, and they really are two fantastic choices and you can't go wrong with either. Now I really will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.